the new momentum uh, for the energy transition and the coming mm. out of the, uh, uh, the COP meeting that happened in Dubai, uh, they even agreed to, you know, like, move away from fossils, yet forcefully before there was a tendency of reluctance. Uh, seeing that we are nearing the peak of our development stage in terms of oil, do you think that such a development might just shortcut our, short circuit, our, um, our prospects of development, especially now anchored by oil in the medium term? Financing these COP developments is, is a very expensive venture. Very expensive. By the time you move to renewable energy, by the time you move to green financing and what have you, that money is not easy to come by. So who's going to give you that money? There was a commitment by the advanced countries to to put in almost 100 billion towards this, but that money has not been forthcoming. So it is very expensive to move to this uh, or to reduce the net carbon emissions and to move into a green economy. So I think the most important thing is. If Uganda can harness its oil resources in a manner that protects the environment and use whatever resources that is earning from those from the oil resource to move the economy towards renewable resources, towards a much more green economy, I think we are better off how, you know, uh, harnessing this resource to get us to where the COP wants us to, to be. Because this is about 2050, all right? And if the first commercial oil is coming on board in 2025, 2026, there's 25 years to get into that. So there's a lot that we can do. If you'd advise government to make exports count and not entirely be subject to the dynamics of the world, but deliberately, what would you say to them outside gold and coffee, which seem to, to be uh, somehow on their own axis? First, I'll look at the Vision 2040. Vision 2040 is about uh, socioeconomic transformation. You want to lift people out of subsistence into a monetary economy. So if you are going to use exports for that, you need then to ask yourself, where are the majority of the Ugandans engaged in? Where is our competitive advantage in terms of the export sector? As of now, it's agriculture. So I think we need to boost our agricultural production. We need to commercialize agriculture. So how do you make the farmer down there, the small holder farmer down there, contribute towards the exports of agriculture? So first of all, you have to empower the farmer down there to increase the production of their agricultural pro uh, uh, um, output and then once you've done that what do you do with the increased output you have to find market for it and that market can be found in urban areas but sometimes the output outstrips the demand nationally so you need to look at the region because we have a competitive advantage in agriculture if you look at the region here so I want to believe that the value chain that's involved in this agriculture is quite significant and it, it's, it spreads affecting so many people. And if that is harnessed, then we can talk about socioeconomic transformation. A very clear example of this is milk. I think the government has, has scored a very big plus in terms of milk. The value addition that has gone into the, you know, into the milk industry is significant. But we are seeing the same thing also. If you take, for example, uh, soap, cooking oil, animal feeds that are being processed out of the, um, the soya beans, out of the sunflower, out of the cotton seeds, right, uh, in, uh, in, in the Lango sub region, this is being exported to the region. Um, the rhetoric on value addition of starting from the president is very well known. In the PPP uh, dispensation, if you to recommend, what would government role be specifically? Where would private sector be and where would government be? I, identifying markets. Mm. For example, government, government did a good job for milk, right? When our milk had issues in Kenya, mm. 
I think government found a market in Algeria, if I'm not mistaken, right? So I didn't, I didn't find, you know, markets becomes very, very important as well. And providing infrastructure, all right? And then assisting, uh, the, you know, the private sector in terms of uh, uh, agro-processing. And I think here the issue of credit becomes very, very important. And as a central bank, of course, also now this is where we come in. How can we work with government to identify uh, capital that can de-risk some of the, uh, the, the activities of, of the private sector, particularly if they want to break through into the, into the regional market? Mm -hmm. Because it's very expensive. These banks are mobilizing resources at a, at a very high cost. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you have got to break into the market, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, an exporter, a manufacturer, borrowing at those high interest rates, find it so difficult to, you know, to service the loan. So how can we de-risk? How can we lower the risk of interest rates? What incentives can we give exporters? All right, so that they can access, I mean, access uh, cheaper credit to break into these original markets.